Hello and welcome to another Studio Diaries. It's Monday and I have like a teeny tiny amount of time alone this morning. Um, I've got about another half an hour. I just thought I'd say hello because I haven't put my face on any of my Studio Diary vlogs for the last two weeks I don't think and I don't know I just thought it's a bit rude. <laughs> it's not really rude but I just wanted to say hello so here I am. Um, so I yeah as you saw if you watched my last two vlogs I've just been working 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 just concentrating on drawing and trying to get everything done um, which is really nice but also a bit stressful because it's, it's very hard to juggle doing all the creative stuff doing all the drawing and everything and then also um, my son now being on holidays uh, but I'm doing my best and we'll just have to see what happens um, so I did loads and loads of sheets well, I think I did this all last week and this isn't all of them, but I've got all my like bits of drawings I did. This is all on thick watercolour paper. Um, you can see me making this lot in my last vlog. I think there's another one somewhere, just left here. You can see um, me painting those in the last vlog, I think. Maybe it was the one before. I can't remember, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I started painting these ones in definitely in last week's vlog. And I'm sort of like, I have mixed feelings about the results. I was trying to keep it simple with not so much detail. But um, I don't know. Maybe it's too simple for me. I'm not sure. Anyway, I've done them. They're quite nice. They're okay. I probably, what will happen is I'll put them away. And then in like a few years time, I'll look back and go, yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, you did all right. <laughs> <laughs> but for now the in it's not okay I just want to say I know I'm very critical of what I do and it isn't like entirely a self-confidence issue as in I think I'm terrible at art and I should give up it's actually a lot to do with what I imagine I can do in my head and what I actually physically produce and there's a huge gap and I suppose that always is there's always going to be a gap between what you want to do and how you imagine things and what comes out on paper. There pretty much always will be, I think. But I'm not competing. How can I say? I'm not <clears throat> I'm not sort of saying oh, I'm terrible at art and I should give up. I'm, I have no talent. It's more frustration at the fact that I feel like I, I could do much better. I have the potential to do so much better, like everybody does. If you practice, practice, practice anything, you will get better. And with drawing and painting it's so obvious when you see what you used to do and what you do now you can see a development and an increase in skills and things like that and I just feel like the pace that I want to be at the position that I want to be at I'm always far behind <laughs> so I feel like I'm always trying to catch up with what I think I could be doing but I can't because I can't sort of I suppose I can't dedicate the time to it I suppose or maybe I feel like maybe I'm not quite going in the right direction. I just think, I feel like if I just woke up and just painted all day long and then maybe stopped to eat, then I could maybe get to the point where I want to be fairly soon, maybe in like 10 years. <laughs> but I can't do that. And that frustration is kind of like, it's a bit, that's what makes me feel a bit negative sometimes. So if you hear me saying in any of my vlogs or any of my videos, oh, I don't really like it. It's not... It's not me being really down on myself and there isn't a cue for everybody to say, oh, it's really good, I really like it. It's not really to do with that. It's more frustration with this, this gap I feel between what I could do and what I am actually doing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I suppose you could sort of liken it to like a marathon runner. Like when I, I don't run now, I can't run now, my knees just get knackered after two seconds. But like if if you run a marathon you can look around you and you can try and race other people or you can concentrate on yourself and you can push yourself and think about um improving whatever it is you want to improve you might want to go quicker you might not want to go quicker you might want to improve your style you might want to improve like your distance regardless of what everybody else is doing because always in any race you're going to have people in front and people behind you know that's just guaranteed and it's the same with I feel like the same with creative stuff you're always going to have people that you perceive because it's all about perception that you perceive are better than you or perhaps maybe don't have quite as many skills as you and then look you know loads of people all around the side everywhere just like you're in a massive marathon and you can look at everybody else and you can be like oh oh god I want to catch that person or you can say what do I want to do 
and when I'm running the marathon of creativity, I feel like I'm not, I'm trying really hard to consciously not look at other people unless I'm thinking, oh, they've got a good style and I quite like to emulate that. Like if there's somebody running ahead of me who's doing it slightly differently, I might look at them and think, okay, I'd quite like to try that. But it's not that I'm trying to be the best or I feel like because I'm not at the front, I'm not worth it or, you know, or maybe I'm right at the back and I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, I'm so slow compared to everyone else. But, yeah, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm trying to say that instead of looking around at everybody else, I'm more trying to think about myself. I'm more trying to think about my style, my pace, my ability and Push, like if you're in a marathon, you're you're testing yourself to see how um, how much your body can do. Your battle is with your body, isn't it, most of the time, or with your mental, um, you know, state. I think I don't run marathons, but this is what I've heard, and it's the same with me for art. I'm not looking at everybody else, trying to look at everybody else, and compare myself. What I'm doing is thinking about me, and I think I can do better, and I'm sure I can do better. And there's more I want to do, and I really want to get better at certain things, and I want to do more, more, more. And when I can't, that's when I get a bit frustrated and down on myself. And you know, obviously, from time to time, I do look around and go, "Oh my God, I'm useless, and nobody cares," and that's kind of normal. And I do apologise if that happens from time to time. But but yeah, so if you hear me being a bit negative sometimes, like, "Oh, I don't really like it," it's not a cue. It's so nice of people to say, "Oh, I really like it," and that really helps because. It gives value to the work in a way that if somebody else likes it, then that makes me feel nice. And I do like it. It's just when my, when I get down or negative, it isn't like, oh, I'm so crap. It's more, oh, I could have done better. I feel like I could have done better. I want to try again to do better. <laughs> so anyway, that was a very large tangent. But I just wanted to say that because like my, my feelings about these images are, I could do so much better. Like I really genuinely think I could do better than this. And if I keep going, I'm sure I will. Um, but yeah, but they're perfectly all right. They're fine. <laughs> so yeah, um, what am I going to say next? So I'm working on some patron sheets digitally. Um, I'm going to do date stickers for one of the sheets this month. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to kind of try and crack those out this week. Um, so I will try and film some more interesting things this week. I know the last two vlogs were very painty painty drawery, which I know is nice to watch. I know some of you like that, but um, yeah, it's not really supposed to be draw with me, I suppose it's supposed to be vlogs. So maybe if we go somewhere nice this week, I can take the camera. I don't know if we will. It's very hot. So it'll have to be somewhere air conditioned. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching and let's get on with the video. Just thought I'd show you this little area I set up for my son to do his homework, which he reluctantly does at this desk. Um, it used to be my sewing desk, but it's kind of, I've given it to him for the summer so he can sit and do his... Um, homework and any drawing or whatever he wants to do so it's just opposite my desk which is here so he'll be joining me in about half an hour and hopefully we can both get what we need to do done <laughs> so the bulk of the work this week is all going to be digital um, because I've done all of the painting on papers I've scanned them all into my computer and now I'm simply playing around with them and making up uh, the sheets for my Patreons. So here they are. This is what my um, second and third tier Patreons are going to get this month. Um, so I did one sheet of date stickers, um, which you saw on the computer a moment ago. Then I did a couple of other sheets, which are kind of just images um, that could be cut out and, you know, used as stickers or elements in collage and things like that. So I'm really hoping my patrons like them this month. And um, I'm actually quite pleased that I managed to get it all done because I was quite worried about how I was going to like make enough sheets this month. Um, but I think I did it all right. So hopefully they love them. Hello, so it is Tuesday morning now and I'm a bit tired. I was up late last night finishing off all my digital sheets for Patreon, but I'm really glad I got them done and I'm actually really proud of them. Having said what I said yesterday about sort of being in sort of like a marathon and always trying to beat my personal best. At the first, I thought maybe I hadn't got anywhere near my personal best, <laughs> but I think I've just nudged over. I think I might have just got a new personal best record in terms of um, my digital sheets for Patreon because I feel like um, I just feel like I did the best job I've done so far so that's quite good I'm in month seven now of my Patreon journey um, 
so in total so as you can tell the doorbell went and I ran off to answer it and then completely forgot what I was talking about but um basically I think I was saying that in total for the month of July I've done four digital sheets so the first digital sheet I think I showed you in the last vlog um and I've actually cut mine up now so I'm gonna have to insert some footage here if I can find some of what that looked like and um, I've actually started using it in my own planner so I'm gonna show you those in a bit but yeah in total I did one sort of mini sheet which is like not quite a full A4 sheet um, for all my tiers and then the tiers two and three they get these extra ones so I did one sheet of date stickers and I really I really like these I'm really really proud of these ones um I like all the textured layers that I built up I used several different sheets to make this one up digitally um and I'm really pleased with the effect and the colours and I'm really hoping my patrons enjoy using them and I'm going to try and work out a way to use them myself because I don't actually use date stickers at the moment myself but um, I plan to. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you the pieces that I used to make those up. So the first sheet was just some sort of gouache paint blobs I did. Then I had this sheet of like dashes um, which I used to sort of create that texture you can see. Um, at the bottom here um, and then the next layer on top of that I used my ink dots that I used making dots from an ink dropper um, so that was the next layer that went on top and so you can see on here you can see the sort of the dotty parts across the, um, the image and then I also used this sheet in the background um, I kind of put this on at the last minute and I liked it so much that I left it I sort of I was going to leave this um around the date stickers completely blank but I actually kept it in the background and then I used those little flowers there to do little details um of flowers of morning glory flowers so those are all the sheets I used just to make up that one digital sheet so you can see how I'm using like you know several different <laughs> pieces of actual physical work loaded up into the computer and then layered up to make each piece. So again I did the same with this sheet so this is the second sheet um, for my top two tiers and I, I decided to do like larger sort of frames and images for this sheet um, and I really enjoyed sort of putting together that bamboo tree there with the decorations hanging off it. Um, I think I like these frames because you can write in the little white space or you can sort of cut them out and put photos behind them. But you can see here, I've used this sheet, I've taken the elements off here and then I've sort of layered them up onto different things. You can see those flowers there and that pot of plants and the little image of the people putting things on the tree at the bottom. And then these frames here, I actually painted some frames in gouache paint and I scanned those in and I used those. So this is the sheet here. So I just painted these sort of freehand frames because um, I figured I might use them for something and I did in the end. Um, so I've layered up these two large patterns here and I sort of, um, using something called a clipping mask in Photoshop, um, sort of filled in the frame shape with that pattern um, and then I sort of left a sort of a colour wash over the top. Sorry if I'm not explaining this very well. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you all the different elements that go into one digital sheet. Um, but yeah, this is the last sheet. This, is, this was a fairly straightforward sheet. I decided I would just do sort of square images because um, I wanted to give my patrons a piece of all the patterns I'd done each as well as those illustrations that I'd done at the end of last week. So I figured what I'd do is I'd just do like a squared sheet so they can cut these pieces out and use them for whatever they like. So rather obviously the patterned squares come from my pattern sheets um, which are these ones and then obviously the square illustrations come from this sheet. There was one image at the bottom right there that I did make up digitally and so to make that one I used a background of it was kind of just painted a random sheet in this lovely sort of um, 
I can't remember which blue I use now, but um, I just kind of cut a piece out, cut a piece out of that um, digitally, um, and then I laid down these strips or bars. I'd basically drawn out these strips, thinking I'd probably use them to make like trellis. So I crisscrossed them over each other to make a sort of trellis effect on there and changed them to white. And then I popped my three little Asagao painting-y doodlies. Asagao, sorry, is morning glory. <laughs> and I popped those on top just to make fill up that last square because I had a spare one. So what I'm doing with all of these pieces, um, all of my original artwork that I'm using for Patreon, like that I use specifically for Patreon, that's loose, because I tend to do it all on loose sheets because it's easier to scan. Um, I put them all in like um, just this paper folder. I picked up ages ago. God knows where from. I think I got it from like um, some sort of thrift shop type place. It was somewhere where you could go and get loads of random old art supplies and things ages ago in England. <laughs> so I only have one. But yeah, I'm just storing them in here really. So I've got all the original artwork from all the past months um, stored in here. Um, yeah, and I just kind of keep them roughly, roughly in order all together in here. Because then I know if I'm looking for a particular image and I want to reuse it or rescan it, uh, if I know it's for Patreon, I know exactly where to find it. So that's what's going in here. I tend to work in my sketchbooks until the point where I'm ready to actually make the final pieces and then I tear the paper out of sketchbooks to work on on flap. So those will go in the back of there in case I ever need to grab them again. I don't really know what I'll do with them. I suppose I'll just keep them as like an archive. Um, yeah. And see how long it takes me to fill the folder up. It does have sort of like a a bit of space left in it, thankfully, so. And I'm actually going to use one of my stickers from last month's Patreon um, to just label them up. Um, I'm going to use the teapot one. So that's that, and that's ready to just pop back on the shelf behind me. Um, so if I need to grab any of the images, I can get them. But otherwise, they're all safely stored away and organised, which makes me quite satisfied. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly show you my um, current planner. I'm not going to give you like a flip through of it at all. I'm just going to show you the last few weeks um, of July um, where I've used my stickers from my first mini sheet from Patreon. So I'm using Astology, an A6 one, um, and I kind of have this page before my monthly spread, so I, I just whack that big old <laughs> lovely frame down on there, and I'll probably write July in it in a bit when I get round to it. Um, but just to show you the size of what was on that mini sheet, um, this is A6, and then these are my weekly spreads. So I used the sort of faux washi at the bottom of the first page. Um, I quite like the effect of that one. I've never made a washi before, so that was quite sweet. And then the following week I stuck down the two little star people decorations on the 7th of July, which is when the actual Tanabata festival happened. Um, because these are like doodles from Tanabata sort of inspired images. Um, that was my theme for the July Patreon. Um, yeah, and then I just stuck the flowers and the fans and bits and bobs just going back through the previous weeks in July and just sticking them down in any spare space I had. I wasn't really planning on using many stickers in this planner, to be honest, because I don't want it to get too bulky, but um, it's just too irresistible. <laughs> and I don't mind going back and sticking stickers down after the week's completed, because um, that way I know that I've got the space available and it just is quite fun to do that without having to think. I don't have to put anything specifically down on any specific day. I can just plonk it where it looks nice or where there's a space. Um, so I kind of prefer to put stickers, like the backfill stickers, if you see what I mean, in my planner, rather than do them ahead of time or have any relevance to what's actually happening that week, because these definitely don't really. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought I'd show you what they look like on a page, um, just to see how I'm using them. And then it's time to move on to the next and final phase of Patreon for this month. So I am putting together my project post boxes. 
And I'm sort of covering up that page on the right because I've got a few ideas about what I'm going to do for the next month, but I kind of don't want to give it away or get anybody thinking something's going to happen when it's not. Um, but on the left side, I've got um, notes. I'm going to make some tanzaku. I'm going to make like a hanging decoration, I think, and some stickers and bits and bobs. So I just have this notebook next to me. This is, again, my MD Midori Cotton notebook. And I have that next to me, and I just sort of work through all my digital files and start creating the pieces I need to print. So Project Post is the top tier and I physically send physical things to um, a limited amount of patrons every month. And it's really fun and really good for me to be actually physically making things as well as doing computer work, as well as doing drawings. Um, it kind of gives me a nice creative balance. I'm just showing you here that I'm planning on cutting those out as die cuts. Um, and these are the Tanzaku designs. These are the long strips called Tanzaku that are hung on bamboo in the Tanabata Festival in Japan. So yeah, I just kind of work through my files, make all the digital files up and then get printing and cutting. You can see my son there in the background. <laughs> He's probably playing Minecraft on the iPad while I do this. Um, he's sort of finished all his homework, so he's allowed to have a little Minecraft treat. So yeah, as I'm saying, um, yeah, I'm just going through all my digital pieces and grabbing bits from all the different layers and making up all the physical things um, to print for Project Post. So here we have the first thing printed, um, and I'm really, really pleased with this actually. I think it's really cute, and I'm, I'm glad I printed one for myself as well. <laughs> I really like it. Um, quite surprised when I like things that I make. <laughs> and these are the Tanzakus coming out of the printer now. Um, this is on high speed, this camera, by the way. This doesn't really print that fast. Um, but yeah, I print eight on a sheet. I've actually got seven um, people in my project post here this month. So that means I've got a spare one to either keep back for myself or to give to a friend or um, just keep in case I need it for something. Um, I always do extras just in case because sometimes I make mistakes and you know mess things up and it's good to have a spare. Um, I'm just printing off my pattern sheets onto paper here and I'm just cutting them up into little strips and then I will make them up into little packets and my project post members will get a little selection of papers. I mean they're only teeny. <laughs> it's just um, I just wanted to give a little bit of the pattern each to all of them just to kind of give them an idea of what it looks like. Because um, I tried to keep my packages physically small because postage costs went up quite recently from Japan. Um, kind of in line with the rest of the world, to be honest. It wasn't an unreasonable change, but it did mean that postage costs went from being very pretty cheap, really, to being kind of normally quite expensive. So, um, and obviously it's all related to the weight. So I don't put a huge amount of stuff in. And not only that, but I try and keep it within sort of an A5 size. So I tend to pack lots of little small bits together um, for Project Post um, rather than do any huge sheets. Um, yeah, so these are little, just tiny little sort of samples, as it were, of the patterns that I'd made um, during this month. And I decided this month to do some little thank you tags just when it comes to wrapping up everything that I'm sending out. Um, so I just typed thank you on um, some plain sticker paper and stuck that on for some little painted blobs I'd randomly done last week. So this is me making up the Tanzaku, the two designs of Tanzaku. Tanzaku being the strips of paper that people write their wishes for skills they want to improve for the Tanabata Festival here in Japan. Um, and I also made these sort of random little round pieces. <laughs> well, I was just playing around with paint, really, to be honest, on some watercolour paper. Because um, I quite like the way the blue and the purple was sort of mixing together and then separating on the paper. And then I think oh, I'm going to do a few little stickers. So I made a few little stickers up to go in. And this is me showing you um, some yukata fabric that I bought. So this is sort of retro vintage fabric that I bought second hand um, with this cute little girl on admiring the morning glories. And I'm going to share a little bit of that with my project post here this month. Um, and I'm using my sewing machine downstairs to fill, make up these little um, folders, it's like pockety things, which is what I'm going to use to store all of the bits and pieces this month.
So I'm just going to finish here by showing you a few photos of what I sent out in the post on Friday um, for this month's Patreon rewards for Project Post. Um, and then for the following day, we decided we really had got to get out of the house. <laughs> so we went on a little trip um, up a mountain in the middle of the city called Chi City. Um, and it's called, this place is called Makino Botanical Gardens. Now, some of you who are Hobonichi fans probably have heard of Makino. So Tomitaro Makino is quite famous in Japan. He's the most famous botanist, I think, in Japan. And he set up this garden and did loads and loads of research. He worked as a botanist. Um, and he drew these wonderful little drawings. And one of these, well, actually, you know, I think a couple of years running now, his drawings have been on the covers of some Hobonichi Weeks. So, yeah, he's famous around here. And he was born in the town near us. And, um, yeah, we just we decided to go up to see his botanical gardens. We've been quite a few times. But they actually had an exhibition on today. Um, this time um, about endangered species in our prefecture, which is quite interesting. Enchanted seven, enchanted six, enchanted nine, enchanted sixty-four million. Um, so we had a bit of a look round and a bit of a wander around the gardens, but it got so absolutely boiling hot, especially when we decided to go in the hot house, in the greenhouse. Um, but we didn't stay there too long. We probably had like an hour and a half, two hours there and then headed home again. But it was really nice to get us out of the house and get us seeing something. And my son really enjoyed it. We had a lovely, lovely time out, a bit of fresh air and um, really enjoyed it. So yeah, this chap, Tommy Tamamakino, is it's quite interesting coincidence that his birthplace and the, his botanical gardens are actually in my prefecture when I'm such a big fan of Hobonichi so um, if you have a Hobonichi with his work on do let me know in the comments so I'm going to leave the video here and say thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you've got any questions you've got any comments or suggestions or anything at all um, do let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and thank you very much for watching especially if you made it to the end <laughs> and I'll see you all again next time Bye.